David Fincher likes to treat his audience with respect. In 1995, his second motion picture, Seven, was released to shock the world. At the time, certain critics argued that the movie had no substance and it was just a gruesome spectacle. However, upon deeper analysis, you will find that Seven is actually a very subtle movie in a lot of ways. It is this subtlety that many filmmakers, especially directors today, decide to renounce. So that's it? What, we some kind of suicide squad? They hit you over the head so much with whatever the movie is trying to say that it gets to the point of being even insulting to the audience as if we don't have the capacity to understand what the movie is trying to tell us. Fincher, on the other hand, only shows us just what we need to see or hear to get the point across. In the opening credits, there are very clever cuts in sound and image whenever things start getting too disturbing. Another example is that for the majority of the movie, we have no idea who the killer is. Kevin Spacey was even left out of all the marketing and opening credits. I'd like to speak to my lawyer, please. Since we don't know the identity of the killer for the majority of the movie, the city plays a huge part in the story. In this vividly realized location, the setting itself is the antagonist for the majority of the film. Why here? Ambiguity is key here, since we never know exactly where the story takes place, but we get just the right amount of information. It's constantly raining, and it's seen and referred to as an ugly, disgusting place filled with crime. But the conditions here are horrible. Not revealing the actual location where the story takes place is an extremely smart idea. While there certainly is crime in big cities like Chicago or New York City, we already know that these cities also have positive traits to them, like culture. In Seven's nameless city, it's all misery. Where are you headed? Far away from here. Fincher proves with Seven over and over again that less is more. As an audience, by knowing just certain things about what's happening on screen and not the whole picture, we have to paint some of that picture ourselves. This is an important aspect of horror movies, the extreme example being the Blair Witch Project. A lot of times, imagining is even worse than actually seeing. A further example is the great lust scene. We are given just enough information to connect the dots for ourselves, but that is enough. He, 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 he told me to fuck her. And I did! I, I fucked her! Fincher oh, never God. actually shows any of the murders take place, which is a pretty bright choice because it leaves a lot of ambiguity for who the killer actually is and because we can play detective. So the point is, Seven could have very easily been really bad. It easily could have been some kind of corny slasher flick and it would have been really easy to just make it a gory spectacle in New York City or Chicago, where we see a guy fuck a prostitute with a knife or a dildo and Gwyneth Paltrow's freaking head in a box. But we never do, and Seven works exactly because of this. Great scenes like the dinner scene in Mill's apartment or the diner scene with Tracy and Somerset show us that the focus isn't really on the violence, but on the people. I can't, you know, I can't be a burden, especially now. These restrictions on violence effectively build up the dread more and more until we get a very good payoff. And it is. It's one of the best examples of building up and finally paying off although the ending is hardly satisfying. What's going on over there? Wanting people to listen, you can't just tap them on the shoulder anymore. You have to hit them with a sledgehammer, and then you'll notice you've got their strict attention. Spacey dominates the final act of the movie. Being under arrest, Doe is in an apparent position of weakness, but Spacey's head haloed by the sun foreshadows he is on his way to achieving his supposed religious purpose. Become Wrath. Tell me she's alright! John Doe is always shot on very stable close-ups on a tripod. Mills, on the other hand, is shot handheld, showing his lack of control. 
New Line Cinema actually went against the ending of the movie for being too dark and tried to change it several times. Some of these endings include Mills' dog's head in the box and not Tracy's. Another one was Somerset kills Doe before Mills gets to kill him and says something like, I'm retiring anyway. Luckily, Fincher fought till the end and Brad Pitt ended up saying he would ditch the project if the ending changed. Even after all of this, test audiences disliked the original ending of the film, which was supposed to end with Mills shooting Doe and walking away from Somerset. People will barely be able to comprehend, but they won't be able to deny. So the Hemingway quote was added, and while this wasn't intended, it's a perfect statement to reflect the central theme of the movie. Ernest Hemingway once wrote, The world is a fine place and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. This shows us the progress of Somerset as a character, as he is no longer filled with apathy. It also reflects Fincher's ideas and the central theme of the film. But in the end, it's pretty amazing to be alive, so it's all worth it. Somerset's arc and the theme of the movie perfectly match up. At the beginning of the film, he is trying to get as far away from the city as possible. I just don't think I can continue to live in a place that embraces and nurtures apathy as if it was a virtue. But he reaches catharsis in the end and realizes that after everything, it's still worth fighting for good in the world. Where are you gonna be? Around. In a very odd way, Seven is strangely optimistic. Seven shows us the worst parts of humanity, but it uses its awful circumstances to deliver a message of optimism. It shows that anyone can be exposed to the worst parts of humanity, but instead of falling victim to it, you can come out stronger on the other side and refuse to give in to apathy. I'll be around. Seven is a great movie, with one of the most memorable endings in movie history. It put Hollywood cliches like buddy cops to the test, and it worked. It stands tall as one of the most atmospheric movies ever made. Every moment is filled with dread, and although it's a violent movie, Fincher knows exactly what to show and when to do so. So in a way, it's a very restricted movie. New filmmakers should look up at Seven as an example of how not to be overly indulgent and to treat the audience with the respect that we deserve.